What's up, everyone? You're listening to the Rival and Queen podcast. I'm Ashley. I'm Sarah. We're bringing you all the Thursday feels today. And all the excitement. So spooky excitement. Halloween's around the corner. <laughs> Halloween's around the corner. Ooh. 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 What are you going to be, Sarah? Uh, I'm going to be a version of Shania Twain. Ash, what are you going to be? I'm going to be another version <laughs> of Shania Twain. Shocker. Shocker. We'll give an early little shout out to my sister, Jennifer Murphy, for her birthday Happy on birthday. Halloween. Happy birthday. What a great birthday. I know. I'm like when excited. you're a kid, that must be dope. I'm glad that like, I don't know about the rest of the world, but at least in Atlanta, Canada, they've decided to keep Halloween as a go for the kids. And I think that's kind of fun. We're lucky. We're very lucky. I'm excited to dress up. And we had an actually an epic visit to Valley Village this weekend. Oh, did we? We, we stood in the lineup to get into Valley Village. Like a 20 person line. <laughs> and we did it as a team. You and Jeff and I bared the crowds in the Valley Village. Listen, my craziness. costumes cost under 20 bucks. So I'm down for it. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm sure people will see some, some heavy Shania content coming at you soon. Mark your calendars for Saturday, October 31st, guys. We're going to have it all over the Insta. I know it's a Saturday. <laughs> so crazy. It's so good. Oh, it. It's hard goodness. to believe it's almost November, which is crazy. You know, we got Halloween. I'm excited. Ash. <laughs> and then it's Christmas holidays all coming. Should we welcome those who are new here? Yes. If you haven't listened to this, is this is Sarah and I. We just kind of like go off on tan tangents from time to time. But welcome if you're new here. Thanks for listening. We are two East Coast, go Goals? <laughs> East Coast Goals? girls, best friends, discovering life a little more on purpose and really trying to understand people and things that we don't really know a lot about. So we hope that you guys will continue to join us. If you like what you hear, don't forget forget to subscribe and give us give us some feedback and some love we love that also we bring you lots of excitement as we just learned because our producer so lovingly told me i don't have a smooth voice so for everyone listening i'm so sorry that you have to listen <laughs> to the unsmoothness of well my i voice. can't talk i just like <laughs> spit my words out incorrectly so anyway but he did tell me that we bring excitement in our voices so that's nice and hopefully you guys are okay with that Mark's going to get some shade. So if you want to give him any feedback, you can find him at BNB Media. Yeah. Let him know. <laughs> Let him know what you really think. We love this. Ash, I want to talk to you about something what? besides my smooth voice. Tell okay. Me in your smoothest voice. <laughs> I don't know if I can tell you anything about my smoothest voice. <laughs> Try. Um, Okay, one of the things that we actually talk about in this week's episode is like a working schedule. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I've taken a traditional work sabbatical. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm using like air quotes. I'm I'm working on a new project. But what I found is that even initially, not now, I've kind of adjusted, but when I was starting to work on my own again, I felt like I had to be working nine to five. And it's so funny that this is like ingrained in us because in this episode, we actually talk about, you know, how important it and how impactful it can be to adjust your, your work to be something that fits around your life rather than your life fitting around your and work. It's, it's up here. It's in your mind. Yeah. And, but for me, it took a few, honestly, months to make that shift. Like even when I wasn't working on a project diligently, I was still like, I got to show up to my computer mm -hmm. nine to five. I don't know why. I think COVID's <laughs> helped really change that and put new perspective for a lot of people on that because I think that it's easier to be focused and be alone, perhaps not in an right. office or a traditional office setting and actually focus for a few hours and then still be able to do, you know, a lunch Step workout out. or run, yeah. Yeah, run out and not really have any less like work done and productivity. Right. So I think that it's like a good thing for everyone to kind of realize what is productive and what's not, because sometimes it's not just being physically in an office in front of your computer or socializing. I mean, we used to work together. Imagine that. Um, we were pretty good, <laughs> but you do get, there's distractions and, and other things right. that happen. So when you are like you said, like working kind of like not, not nine to five or whatever structure works for you, as long as you're getting shit done, what's the difference? No, it's, but I had to turn a mental switch for sure. Because I think for me, it was like a day when I was like, whoa, wait a second. 
I'm living my life right now as if my life revolves around work. But the crazier part, and I think that in itself was like a big shift for me, was that like my work was defined entirely by me. Um, mm. And so once I realized that, I was like, wait a second, what could my life look like if that wasn't the thing that I built it entirely around? If I just so built it scary. around. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I had lunch today with my friend, Phil, who I love dearly. And it was funny. It was in the middle of the day. I don't always love like meeting people in the middle of the day because I, I do like to give myself long periods of time to do work and focus. But what I realized is that lunch was like, I got so many ideas and so many new things came through for what I'm actually working on from that. I love a good lunch. I went home for lunch with my friends today. Do I love a good work day lunch? If it's the right day. I mean, if I have like back-to-back -back calls or things <laughs> like and stressful, no, I don't love that. But if you have a day that you're like, you know, working or prospecting, doing whatever, answering emails, it's like, it's refreshing, I think, to, to go outside. You know, it depends on the day. But that brings us to our super badass women, entrepreneurs, mompreneurs specifically, who run their own shows too. Sarah, tell us who those people are. Oh, today, do we have the guests for you? We got Priya and Ton on, the founders of Blush Co. We are very big fans. Yeah, this is probably, some people may have been following along on social media and seeing a bit about what Blush Co is doing. Um, but if you're not, it's it's launching actually in the next few weeks. We're not gonna say that- In November. Yeah, in, in November, so any day. And so the big thing that we cover, we've actually had some requests from our listeners for this and we love you guys for all of your feedback. But Priya and Ton are based, like in this episode, they basically tell us all about their new business. But the piece I love most is they told us how it actually came together which was only a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And really it came from the experience of being in COVID and them seeing firsthand the effect it had on makers and creators who really relied on in-person interactions to sell their goods. So it was nice to hear how their whole business has come together in such a short period of time. They also tell us all about how they manage their time and how working with each other as a team really helps them balance and really how they include their kids in their life and their work. And it's, it, it was great. Mm -hmm. No, they're definitely doing, they're doing a lot of different things. They both have great um, experiences that I think have aligned them together to be able to launch this, this brand. Um, so it's going to be super exciting to see that unfold and they're doing some really cool things and fabulous women in business. We love that. Um, so we're so excited for them. And who, for anyone who is interested in learning more after you listen to the episode, um, the Blush Co. Box, as Ashley said, launches in November. It is all local local makers, all women, all women, mostly women of diversity, like mm -hmm. different backgrounds. It's awesome. And if you want to stay in tune with that, you can sign up for their newsletter at blushco.ca and you'll get, you'll get a heads up when that's coming live. Yeah, sign up because we just did. And uh we're excited. We love these women. <laughs> we can't wait. This is just such a fun conversation. We hope you guys enjoy. And if you want to follow them, you can at blushco.ca and at blushco branding. At, sorry, at blushco.branding. Amazing. Check them out. Ash. Let's 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 dive into the other side. Oh, that was my smooth <laughs> voice to send us off. Take us in. Um, so we're so excited to have Priya and Ton joining us today on this busy, busy Sunday, busy for you guys as moms, of course. So thank you so much for being here and making some time to chat with us. We're it's super excited. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really funny how we met. I think it was we ran into each other at Highway Man, which is a local restaurant here in Halifax with yeah. Vicky and Amanda and Nina. And here we are. So it's really good. You guys are doing a ton of exciting things and Sarah and I can't wait to learn more about what's next. A brand new company launching. Yeah. Yep. During a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Is basically, that basically two companies launching in a pandemic? Yeah. You tell us, tell us what, what you guys are doing. So we have a business and we have two components to the business. So the first one is we're launching a lifestyle box. It is released quarterly with curated items from like locally sourced, local makers and locally sourced items from small shops. Um, it's something that we kind of thought about 
years ago to to create and it's coming to fruition and our first one launches yeah. next month oh my gosh and in november in november i'm not gonna say exactly when. no okay it launches in november it's, so it's the winter box so we have sort of seasonal seasonal boxes and it'll be a kind of uh yeah so this so, so your company's named blush co right yeah, yeah. Awesome. And this is actually how we connected when Vicky introduced us because she is so excited. She's one she's of a connector. She's in one of her products is in your box. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And actually the night that you guys ran into us at the Highway mm -hmm. Man, we were celebrating like it was like our first filming day. Yeah. Right. We had just filmed uh, the first episode in partnership with um, the Credit Unions and it's like because they're following along on our journey. And we so we're out, we're like, we had our makeup on. Yeah, like Amanda had done her makeup that morning. We're like, this cannot go to waste. Yeah, yeah. we need to get out there. Yeah, like, I love that. Go out and yeah, be seen. We saw you. Yeah, and now we're here. And then look, we made <laughs> look at us now. You know, now you're on your first podcast. So this is fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it so was a big day. I is this wasn't a COVID conception then. This was something that happened. You no. said a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, so we met a couple of years ago. Yeah, and you know, like Priya was always really like. Okay, we gotta we gotta do something together, and I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and then you know we just kept talking about it, and we really wanted to do something um, together, and like own something that we could really just build and change together over time. And I think it was during COVID where we just were like chatting. I think about, oh my gosh, like I can't believe like most stores aren't even open anymore, and like, and then I'm, I was talking about my mom and how she's a maker, and like. The challenges um, that she was experiencing with her store, and she has like one employee, and then that just kind of snowballed. And, and even like I remember you saying that all the craft fairs are yeah, shut down. Yeah, shut down. Until right. further makers it. won't have that ability to kind of connect with their customers. So we were like, oh, well, let's see what we can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of snowballed from there. We're like, okay, well, what if? Like, because you know, every year we both like always try to buy local as much as we can, and I'm always like that big nerd of my stories come December, like walking people around my house for five <laughs> hours, trying on hats and trying on sweaters and pointing out plants and mats. And, oh, anyway, so but now at least it's like yeah. in a more curated system, systematic thing that we're doing. I think it was always a passion, definitely of Tom's and of myself, just to like connect with entrepreneurs, makers, local people who always put their heart and soul into stuff. And so we tried to, you know, think of a ways we could help, help and, yeah. and drum some business in our economy. That was something that we thought of too. Um, I worked in finance for a long time, so I'm really aware of the impacts of, you know, having a downturn economy can actually really affect someone really powerfully. So right. we thought this was a good thing. So then it happened really fast. It happened very fast and it needed to. Yeah. Um, we knew we wanted to capture the holiday right. market and the holiday, you know, spending, you know, when you're thinking about buying for yourself or your loved ones, and we knew this would be a different year for everybody to do that. So we we're hoping that the Bush Co. box really kind of covers a lot of things for people. A, they're supporting local, the local makers and stores are being supported with orders from us, but then you as the customer can have this beautifully curated seasonal box that's items that you're going to love and wear and use and or whatnot throughout the winter but then also those items are not sample sizes or anything they're yeah. like full the oh. full meal deal and you can gift that out or right or whatnot so yeah or keep it for yourself i think that's so that's fabulous right. that that was the inspiration was basically like your mother not being able to access her customers yeah. in the in same the way box. is she awesome. yeah sure is. what does your mother do she is a seamstress oh so she has no nope, not too many spoilers Oh, it says that on the oh, does? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Um, that's the that's the word in here, right? oh. um, so yeah, like my, my parents are both, I guess, makers. They, they work with their hands and they're working in trades. And, and I used to sell um, bits that my mom and I make together when oh, on gosh. that week with, you know, so we, we make things. You're creators. We're just a making family. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> I'm sort of the like she likes to buy making that yeah <laughs> you're into them I'm more the like back end of the operation which I think is also has value but I'm definitely not a maker I love I actually like really respect maker so much because it's so not a part of my life like my mom right. my mom knits and she's an amazing like she works with her hands but that was not her livelihood so um 
So the box, yeah, so that will be coming next month. Now we haven't actually announced that, so this would be the first time we're saying that it'll be released in November. Ooh. We're not saying when. Um, and you're not telling us what's in the box, right? but. No. Yeah, so tell us about that because you did say on the website, and I did look at that, it does have a little kind of write up of all the women involved yeah. and all women. So, so and the, by mistake, like. Oh, really? really? No, not, not a mistake, mistake but it wasn't mistake, intentional. No. We focus on the items like that yeah. we right. in the box. And it turns out. It, then it just like once the list was yeah. finalized, it turned, we looked at the list and we looked at the pictures and like, well, we're like, oh, it's all women. And that's awesome. We love that. We love collaborating with women. That's a big thing yeah. for us. I think women makers. The majority of the women are. There's a lot of, of diversity. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Uh, actually, the majority are. And we also didn't te technically intentionally do that, but we just kind of. You know that's something that's really organic for us given that we are people of color yeah it matters i think we need to have a bit more visibility for for those makers so that was something that we you know un unintentionally intentionally did so we're really happy with that can you tell us some of the people who are in the box of course some of the creators yeah well, vicky vicky mm -hmm. mina we our girl um we're actually creators in the box we, we created an exclusive oh item. oh yeah. um Todd and Priya. Yeah, another <laughs> another business thing happening. I know. I, it's all under right. blush. It's under blush. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then we have Lily Lakes, um, who's a fantastic uh, creator, knitter, extraordinaire. She's so talented. Um, we have Nicole Lapierre, and right. she has a beautiful curated, you know, selection of, of home items and in, in her on her store too. And she was somebody else that actually pivoted her photography business. Yeah. And opened right. her own lifestyle, yeah. lifestyle shop as well. So these women in our box are just extraordinary. Yeah. Um, we have Bailey Fragrance. So they they're just like they're young and they're just fun. Adorable. They're just most adorable humans. <laughs> they, they do like roller balls, like coconut ba coconut oil based. Cool. Like really beautiful. Um, fragrances. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And we have my mom, like I said, and um, so she has a little something, something. As Love there. that. Okay. Um, um, House of Moda. Yeah. So that's a favorite I know in Halifax. Um, she's been around for so long, has yeah. an amazing selection of beautiful things. So beautiful jewels. Really beautiful jewels. So something of hers will be in there. And who are you missing? Well, we're not missing. We no. just didn't get there yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we have uh, paper chains. Oh, so yes, she, she is that. the maven of all things stationary. And the other thing to note too is that the Blush Co. box will have some exclusive items that are only in the box. So you know there will be special items that we help develop with some of the makers. So the products are special. It's just going to be available in the box, like whether it's a unique, uh, I, see, I can't say too much. Yeah, no, you don't have to tell us more. It's like a little unique yeah. something, something. A little that spin on something that, some, like yeah. one of our favorites. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. But, but this is great. We're getting probably more information. I know, actually, we, <laughs> this is it's awesome. So hard not to it's so hard everything. because we it's we actually toyed with the so idea exciting. of telling people all the items. Too. No, right. so we, I like the surprise and aspect. I, yeah. Exactly. Like I want to get, so I'm picturing just like a lot of those kind of boxes that they have, you know, there's, for, there's ones for shaving, whatever they are, tons mm -hmm. of different, you open it up. And I think that's most of the joy is just kind of like surprise. going through the box yeah. and seeing what's so I think we're going to keep this model. I think I really like it. I think it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. especially when you have these fantastic makers in there, like we know and love many of them and and, yeah, yeah. And you're gonna be happy with anything that shows up. You really, one hundred percent. And it's so nice for you guys to give them that additional platform, as you mentioned during COVID. If some of them maybe only had um, some market st stores or setups that they can't do now, and this is kind of like an additional way that they can yeah. expose themselves and make money and we keep business going. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the, we're kind of blasting them everywhere, and, and it's sort of reciprocal marketing too. They've been mm -hmm. really like supportive of us, and that's you know, help boost our visibility. So it's kind of like very reciprocal, but absolutely like we, you know, we had them all over. We took photos, we are featuring oh, so them. Nice. We're gonna like feature the crap out of them. <laughs> on all of our yeah. And that was the other thing, like we wanted to be able to give these makers and small shops a, a little like glimpse of some branding and right. some like professional photography and like videography that they are, may or may not have had access to prior to and to kind of just give the you know 
I guess, give a little nudge into how important social media marketing can be and how big it can be. Right. Um, Which is a big part of your life. It's a big part because of Because you life. have a massive following, you have a blog, so kind of has that will in turn help them get that visibility and exposure and, and help them with their own business. Yeah. Like I always use my mom as an example. Like she doesn't have, she has what, one, like a Facebook page that she, she probably never checks. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's like still taking my mom as an example, like to try to get her to understand how being online, have a presence online can be very valuable, especially now in our current you know, world where everybody is spending most of their money and time online because we can't really go anywhere anymore. Right. Anymore. Definitely in other areas of the world. Yeah. We're lucky yeah. here. We're very lucky here. Definitely. But, you know, everything's a little, like everyone's shifted in terms of how they're spending mm -hmm. and where they're seeing, um, you know, things that they want to try on or buy and things like that. So we just kind of hope that through the pre-launch marketing of each of our boxes that it gives the makers who are in the box a chance to have the, the, the that bigger like, exposure yeah, and like branding beautiful yeah. photos and beautiful vi videos yeah and like you well, are beautiful like you know oh. and, like, you are like your stuff is empowering good. man that's like a really big word for us um and that takes yeah. us to like the branding marketing side that's what i was going to say so there yeah. is a bigger vision than blush co it's not just this box and so Absolutely. is that part of it yeah that exposure or? it is yeah um like Priya has a marketing background and um, I you know, kind of fell into the front end marketing world, you mm -hmm. know, when I started my blog. And one of the things that we wanted to do was make sure that we were able to provide like an approachable marketing, approachable branding, yeah. um, like makers and small shops don't feel intimidated, you know, right. by walking to a like, larger firm or anything like that. And, yeah. Well, it definitely is a new way to market. Um, this is a new world in, in terms of social media and using that platform to, you know, give your business whatever exposure you would like. And I think this is really intimidating for a lot of people. I think it's really mm -hmm. hard to know where to begin. It's hard to know, um, what, you know, what to do, how to, how personal to be, how comfortable they are, um, how to be seen visible. Like, and even me, like I'm not great on camera. I've not you know, I've had a lockdown. She's, down. she's <laughs> <laughs> no, just give me a You're doing great right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I've had a private account for my whole life. Like I've right. never been a visible person on, on social media. So this is taking me out of my comfort zone. And I know a lot of people who have small businesses, they want to, people want to know you. People want to know who you are. They want to know your story. They want to know um, why you started this business or why you're selling this product or what's, what's your background? Like, who are you? Mm -hmm. right. um, and that's become such a important way to connect with your community. And Absolutely. I think people don't want to take that step. And I really understand that. Like we're really like sensitive to that. It's not for everybody to kind of put themselves out there, but it can turn, it can make people really connect with you and that can in turn increase your sales and visibility. So we're kind of trying to show that people so more of an approachable kind of way to help companies that market themselves differently than the traditional ways of course the social media yeah I love that I love that the box is part of that because it does make it seem so approachable like you guys are reaching out basically to who you want your clients to be and helping them get that experience right out of their gate which is awesome yeah we have so much fun curating the box like our we're Fast. we're starting to like our spring box yeah. is like 90 <laughs> and it, is it the same makers for each season no. of box so it's a different collaboration every time i mean sometimes it's fun. overlap depending yeah. right. again like we want to focus on the um, items the items mm -hmm. right so if there's an item we have in mind that really that we really want in there and there's only like one option that we would really yeah. gravitate towards in terms of a maker then it'll yeah. be in there yeah Right. But we do have a spot on our website for um, vendors or makers to apply to be in future boxes. And that's a way, because, you know, like we know of a lot of makers and small shops and brands. But there's lots we, we don't, don't know. know. Yeah. So if anyone's listening to this and has a cool idea or is making stuff, <laughs> head to our website. Go to the website it's and check form. it out. It's a form. Mm -hmm. that's, I like that because you're right. There's people out there that might be in a different community, still local, but just not right here exactly. that are doing something really cool. And, yeah. uh, and you know, our awareness is limited too. Like while we try to be very open and, and totally. aware of things, it's not like we can't know everything and we don't know everything. We know a lot of things. We, don't know <laughs> we will never know everything. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, so I think, you know, giving that little bit of visibility there on our website, people can kind of let us know who they are and 
we've had submissions already. So I think it's it's um, we're kind of getting excited to collaborate with, with different makers for the next box. Yeah. It's nice to hear how it started, like that it truly was something about thinking how makers were going to reach people during COVID and things like that. Um, that I don't, it really draws me to the to the box and that whole idea. How did you? So you guys just started working on this during COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so what were? Yeah. <laughs> which is crazy because it has come together so hey. soon. And Blushco as a company, like what were you guys doing before? Or can you tell us a bit about kind of how you guys came to this? to yeah. actually starting it. Yeah. So, well, we had dinner, like, <laughs> with, Tom, wine, with Tom. much wine, like, about a year ago, actually. And we kind of talked about this lifestyle box, and that was something. And then we, you know, had play dates with our daughters and, like, just kind of talk about it a little bit here and there. Like, we didn't really have, like, a fire under our ass about it. Like, <laughs> until, it was pretty casual. Yeah, it was, like, pretty casual. Yeah. We're like, you know, we'll do it. Yeah. Like, but we've all, we have other things going on. We each have, like, other projects and, and jobs and family and husband and everything. So we have a lot going on. And then it kind of, um, I think in June is when we were like, let's do this. Like, what are we waiting for? Like, why, what, this is the perfect time, actually, like, to kind of, re you know, release something like this. Amazing. That's awesome. That's kind of what happened with us too. It's just like, you have this idea, you don't know how to really, you know how to start it, but you don't know when it's going to start. And you kind of just have to like jump right in and be like, I'm into this. This is happening. Take that first leap of faith. But yeah, yeah you guys also have other businesses. Like you said, your moms, you have husbands, all these things. So how is it kind of like, especially during a pandemic, trying to start a new business and balance all those other things out as well. What is balance? How does it sleep? So that's how <laughs> I don't sleep. Oh, really? Like, do not. Do are you that. working or just like the kids or a bit of everything is kind of. Well, Love and Sundays is a full time job. Yeah. yeah. So, like, tell us about that. That is, that takes up a lot of my time. So, it's a lot of, I know, I know people actually don't really and my closest family and friends oh, I don't really understand I didn't get it until now I really didn't <laughs> like a lot of people just think I literally get sent this water bottle here in front of me and I have to snap one photo and then I go online and I post it and I say hashtag water bottle and then that's it and hashtag money that. just rolls in <laughs> but that's, that's actually <laughs> hours of communication before I can even take a photo and then once I take a photo and then I have to write um, my your copy. Yeah, my copy for it, and yeah. then I have to submit it to get approved. Then, to get approved, mm -hmm. and then that's week. But in between, then I'm doing all the other ones to get submitted, and then you have to plan the photo. Like it's just for me, it, Love and Sundays is a lot of time, in, like with my inbox. There, the, I think right. the time, the back end stuff for, and and I've had a small glimpse of the the contracts and having to be on the phone with. Um, people were doing collaborations with and I'm like I'm exhausted I'm like asleep after one conversation on the phone she does it all day long like it's not it's no joke like it takes so it's, much energy it's a lot of communication yeah I think that's something that um, and you need time to be able to focus on reading and responding back in an intelligent manner totally <laughs> um, and then you know and I find that with the kids in school, like all of a sudden I look at the clock and it's like okay I have one hour left before I need to go pick up the kids and I'm go into that, like wear that hat, wear the mom, mother, wear right. the hat for a few hours and then the kids go to bed and then I'm usually... Then the inbox is full again. <laughs> it, it really, yeah, there's always inbox reading, yeah. but then usually, oh, poor Priya, I like text her. I always start my text with her, I'm like, no need to respond right now. <laughs> I'm usually asleep. Like, yeah. and it's like 1130. Yeah. I'm like, Idea number one. Yeah. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, first thing on the agenda. Let's do this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> then she usually tells me, you need to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I no, I respond at 6:45 the next morning, and I'm like, I hope you're sleeping still because you did not sleep until apparently 1 a.m. And yes, okay, we'll get it all done. But yeah, I mean, it's I, we balance each other out. She okay. has very good boundaries for work yeah. and life. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I lack that. I don't think we have good boundaries either. <laughs> I, I, I have terrible I just, boundaries. I'm, I'm Yours really, are probably worse yeah, than mine. I'm trying to learn, you know, I'm trying to like very much so like. Well, you're trying to, you're trying to honor my boundaries and then like right. because of that, she 
is forced to create her own boundaries. So right. maybe that's a blessing in disguise. What but it is hard when you're so no. into stuff. Like it's hard to yeah. stop. Right? My mind doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. Like that's the problem. Yeah, I can't compartmentalize things. Right. And it's part of our human design as well. When we're into right. something, we're just like yeah, taking just it and going. So many ideas and like. Well, and I'm so excited. Just, like, I could put them down and then like let them go. I'm like, I I, I don't look at my phone after 10 p.m. Like right. you know, okay. I just like shut, I have like a do not disturb from 10 till 6:45, and I just or actually it's 9:30. Get changed. Um, yeah. And yeah, I just try not to like. Since she met me. <laughs> <laughs> She's she like, like John, I can't June. deal with you. It's you. Around June till 9:30. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be nine here in a month. <laughs> yeah. Before the eight, one. Yeah. Yeah. Eight, eight fifteen. Um, yeah, I just feel like, and then I, I just need that for my brain. I can't stare at a screen for that long. But I think it's good to know that because I'm actually, so although I say I don't have boundaries, I don't have a schedule, but I do have boundaries. Like my phone goes off and I sleep with my phone on airplane mode. Not always. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's another There's story. story there. <laughs> yeah, story. We'll talk yeah. after. <laughs> but most times, especially Sunday through Thursday, my phone is like. Have a sip of this coffee. <laughs> yeah, I'm unavailable. <laughs> but but I don't like talking to people in the morning. So it's not even so much at night. It's in the morning. I need the morning for myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't want any. I don't want any ideas or inputs from other people before like 10 a.m. because that's yeah, when too I, many. That's when I'm vibing on my own things, right? Oh, and I kind of yeah. have to honor those first. And like, and I'm filling up her Slack. So we have a. Do you guys use Slack at all? No, no. we use that different one. But yeah, we. But sometimes Sarah won't respond to me. But I know she's offline. I'm like, where the fuck? Like, why <laughs> haven't you respond? Because I'm at work. Like she's like yeah. doing her own thing and like working, but like solo like trying to you know like zone in and <laughs> i just don't work that way sometimes so then you probably open your oh, I it's like, like ding, 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 ding. it's a messaging system, but yeah, yeah it's yeah. but i know you know that but like this is one of the things that like she knows this about me it's not that i don't i want to respond but i need that window where I'm, I'm doing my own work and i have to think without other ideas right mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah, we, those are good things. We would be in trouble together probably, Tan, because yeah. we'd be like. Tan and Ash, you guys be kindred spirits. I'd love yeah. to work at late at night, actually. If I, I could have a night slow out. morning. I'm not a night owl. Really, but yeah. you know why, though? It's because that is the only time during the day that I things aren't open for me to have to go to. I don't have meetings planned. I, there's no conference calls because nobody else is awake. My mm. inbox is slowed down because nobody's up sending things. And... I just, my kids are sleeping, my husband's sleeping. I just yeah. get like a couple to hours to myself. Yeah, it's your alone time. It's my alone time. And that's right. when I can actually really just focus in on ideas that I can't focus in on during the day that right, that have like, I guess, a, a deadline or like a time stamp. Like, mm. I, have to that makes sense. I have to do this, you know? Yeah. And then it's like lunch. You have to like, there's right. all these things. There's all these things you have to do during the day at a certain time. But for me, that's like those two, three hours before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 Two hours. They're good for me, but I'm trying to cut that down. You are actually doing that right? Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Proud. What do you guys love most about bait? Like you're both mothers, but having your own business and having that blend of motherhood and, and business together. I don't know. That's flexibility, like you said earlier, Priya. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. definitely, I got. We both have young kids and. I love, I want to, you know, one of the goals I told my husband was like, I want to go, I want to be able to pick my daughter up from school. Like that, I just like want to be there for things like that. And I, that's really tough. And to not have that nine to five, like, and he works a pretty demanding, you know, sort of eight to five job. Mm -hmm. And so he, you know, in our household, it worked well for someone to be a little bit more flexible mm -hmm. and to kind of make our own hours to work around our life instead of mm -hmm. having to work around a job's life. And that was always a dream of mine. I didn't know how I would kind of create that schedule. That was sort of a dream. And, and you know, I guess having your own business is, is the way to do it. And, you know, we, then we, you know, pick up the slack after. Like, we do talk in the evening. We, you know, we have, so it's not just like I'm working, you know, eight set hours. It's not like that. It just gives me that flexibility to be there for, for my family. Um, and then I also, like, we both have daughters. And I want to show our daughters, like, what, strong women can do and i think that's actually really important to like strong women raise strong women so that's mm -hmm. that's what that mattered to me it's kind of nice for your children too to see you working like i i always really enjoyed that about my parents um or my mother sorry had like 
worked for herself a lot when we were younger and her office was in our house. And I just, I liked, even though I didn't understand what was going on, yeah. it was nice to know, to see that. Yeah. It's kind of Mom's interesting. Hustling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's that, and I think we feel the same way about that. I think like having, you know, being, spending that time with our kids, um, even though sometimes we're on speakerphone while we're cooking, while the kid is yelling in the back, like that happens too, but it still feels like we're there, like the, we're present. It's so much more acceptable now with yeah. COVID. I feel like every, I've had meetings <laughs> right. with calls of people yeah. and like their kids are screaming in the background oh. too. It's just normal. Yeah. Um, what kind of advice would you guys give to other women entrepreneurs, maybe their moms as well, trying to start their own business, but are kind of like reluctant or don't think that they fit into that kind of entrepreneur, um, women in business I would, mind. I would tip so much go for it. I mean, they have literally nothing to lose except mm -hmm. for trying something and maybe it didn't work out that time. And just because something doesn't work out the first time in the way that you want it to, you just need to pivot and then try again. But, yeah. Don't give up. Well, no. yeah, and you know, life is too short. The fear of failure is powerful. And I think mm -hmm. that's what stopped me all, for a lot of years to not go out on my own. And having a partner actually makes it kind of awesome because we collaborate together. We like can, you know, if something's going on in my life, like she can pick up the slack and vice versa. And that is, it's huge. Like, and to have someone you work so mm -hmm. well with, it, like you guys understand, like mm -hmm. this is your life too. and that actually like gives me a little bit of security. Um, and, but yeah, fear of failure was, is powerful. I, I understand that I have it, had it, will have it forever probably, but <laughs> the like failing, failing isn't the worst thing that could happen to you. Like, no. you know, regret. There is a lot of things that could be worse. And I think yeah. touching back on like how important it is to have a partner, we're humans and sometimes we're just on the ball and we feel great we're yeah. we have the highest self-esteem about ourselves and other times you just want to crawl into a little hole and like cry because you doubt everything you're thinking and everything you're putting through but that's when your partner comes in and tells you yes Tom yeah could you stop it no but also <laughs> like you're you're kind of cool and yeah you're doing, you're okay doing great job. like let's uh -huh. just let's just keep going like, okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. That's so true, though. Like, true story. sometimes, yeah, yeah. I mean, that. it's like a marriage. Like, yeah, it's like totally. You're never going to be just on the same steady no. ride. It's just like up and down. Yeah, and you have to be there to support each other and all those things. And I think that's important. Like, I don't know if I could have gone through. You could physically not. Like, I don't just know. do everything alone all the time. Like, like it just. Well, it's nice that you guys are moms and you do have husbands, and and it's just kind of like you get what each other's life consists of. Like Sarah and I are not, but we kind of like understand. Because of that, we lack boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> we waste a lot of time. But if we, if you have fun. Yeah. We have you a lot of too, fun. <laughs> we do. Yeah, we do. But yeah, mm -hmm. and we, I mean, I will say my husband, our husbands are very like badass supporters too. Like they're to have helps. that support at night, at like at home is huge. Like I, Otan's husband might be like this half the night, like, where is she? Yeah, she's not in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, not not in bed. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Eating cheese and drinking a wine. That sounds amazing. Nachos. Yeah. I love it. It's that. my own <laughs> Do whatever you want. No more. No. Yeah, girl. Get a girl. <laughs> I just love those seeing, seeing women and, and anyone who built a business around their life and yeah, around your family and things like that. It's nice to make that shift. And it is a really big shift when it's like, let's actually make my work fit around my life and not this obligation that between these hours, I have to be. A hundred percent. And like, I, I used to work in a job where it was nine to nine, like three times a week. And it was tough because I always felt like I was playing catch up all the time, you know, because mm. those were days where I couldn't get anything else in, done in my life. And you couldn't be there for I anyone. I couldn't be yeah. there to, for, for anybody. anybody. And yeah. it was hard for my husband because those were like the three days that he really had to be on and he, he his job isn't as flexible. So, you know, when I, when I'm at leave and we've kind of gotten to a new routine and I just realized, like, like Priya said, like I needed something that worked a little bit better into the folds of my motherhood, the, the motherhood that I wanted, and mm. the, the family life that I wanted. Yeah, I feel 
the exact same way. When I went on mat leave, I kind of assumed I'd go back to a full-time right. job, and I just never did. So I've been working like part time and, and kind of in ways that I like I I try to create situations around my life. Right. Not not vice versa. And that was something that I like I don't know that I could go back to a mm -hmm. nine to five. It's I think it's hard to go back. Mm -hmm. I think people can easily take the leap, but it's really nice for people to hear that now, especially because jobs are changing, how people work are changing, totally. people might want to take these leaps of faith. So yep. it's nice to hear these positive stories. Well, it remains to be seen. Like we may crash and burn. You guys are gonna do it. You guys, at least you put it out. Yeah, you're doing it. Fail, but we try. We'll just crash in a beautiful cloud of lunch. Oh, I love that. We like to ask everyone we have on the show right now. You guys can each answer this individually. Like, what's lighting you up right now? Lighting me up. Like, what are you excited what about? What are you so excited about? I mean, what are you getting jazzed about? Yeah. I'm oh. just excited that this is all really in the next month gonna just open up. Mm -hmm. Like Blush Co is dropping and something that we worked on together for so long. Yeah. Like so, so long. So that's the kind of the forefront of you guys are in it. Like it's like, happening. Yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like exactly. So it's not exciting. like in the distant future. It's like in a tangible amount of time that is coming yeah it's coming. like it's coming too that's so exciting that's exciting and i yeah i will add to that too like we've worked with a few clients so far on the branding side and sometimes just getting like i got an email back from one of our clients and it actually brought tears to my eyes like she was so happy and she's since texted me like she's just the sweetest and it like she the thing she said that like made the most impact was that she felt empowered Amazing. And I'm like, yes, like that's what I'm like, <laughs> that like, makes it all worth it. Yes, a hundred percent. We're like, we don't like, we're trying, you know, we're trying to create this business, and we don't know it. You know, there's gonna be lots of ebbs and flows, and pivoting, and changing, and all this stuff. But just having that, some that kind of feedback for someone, and she's saying she's feeling empowered is everything. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's all we need. Oh my god, I love this yeah, so much. I, I know you're saying that, and we're each like, you're like, because <laughs> sometimes it can be hard, and you have those moments, and then it just takes one thing or one day to be really good. You just hear something like that, and totally. it just like fills you back up, and you're ready to. Yeah, you remember going. why you're doing it? Yeah, yeah. well, because like we again might fail. Like who knows? Who knows? Um, however, if I, like we impacted these small number of people positively, like at least that's not a failure. So. Mm -hmm. There's we'll always see. something that will lead yeah. you to the next thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, that day though, mm -hmm. with that client was, we left, it was like an oh. all day consultation type thing. Cause we did um, one on one consultation. Like Priya had her set um, points to go over and then I had my set points to go over yeah. and then we did branding photos. And yeah. it was just like, if you, if we could have picked a perfect, I guess, blow into a yeah. client day, like that would be it. And yeah. we left there. We're like, that, one, that was really good. Well. Like that we, was good. Rocked it. Yeah, like yeah. And then we get this yeah. email. We're like, we hope like, she feels the same I way. Know. <laughs> like we want it. Like because our goal with her in particular was to really allow her to feel like she had the confidence to kind of organize the content and post a certain way to kind of give her that confidence that she already had great a great foundation. Yeah. Um, but she, we just kind of helped push her a little bit into a more strategic, um, I guess, workflow. Know, workflow, I guess. I don't content, know. Like, content strategy. Yeah, marketing right. strategy. For and myself. and you know, you leave, and you're like, okay, you know, sometimes we can overwhelm people. I can overwhelm people. I, I know that. Because you see the whole thing. You're I like, do. I and built like, a successful brand. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. And, we, and we go in and we like unload all this information in like a very short amount of time. We're like, okay, bye. Yeah. And they're like, like, how do I post even a story on Instagram? Well, like, yeah. But yeah, like exactly. And, and and we're like, we know this is a lot. Like you're going to have to digest this for like three days. Mm -hmm. so, and then it will make sense. And then, and then, and then it did. And for her, and I was like, yeah, it's okay. It's the work. Yeah, that felt so good. That felt so good. Oh. I love she sent it right to me. Like, oh. I know. I was like crying. My heart. That's yeah. so nice, though, to know that you guys are having that impact already. And I can only imagine. I'm so excited for the launch for you guys because it is such a visceral, oh, such a fabulous time. Oh, thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, it feels so Support. good. <laughs> 
Before we finish up, we do like to play a round of Queenie Grams, which is what a I very mean? important made up game made of up ours. Game. Okay, cool. Su made up game. Super, yeah. super easy. All you do is we'll each go around and answer a question. And all you have to do is pick a number between one and 99. Uh -oh. I'll ask a question. Okay. Well, Tom, do, do you want to go first? Yeah, 11. 11. Okay. Do you brush your teeth when you first wake up or after breakfast? When I first wake up. Ooh. Weird. Oh, <laughs> after this breakfast. question always is so hilarious. Everyone's very passionate. It seems so this. stupid. We get the funniest <laughs> answers. <laughs> we learned so much. So Priya is clearly an after well, breakfast. I actually girl. don't eat breakfast, but after coffee, I definitely. Right. Breakfast. Okay. I think I do. So you're learning all these things. You don't eat breakfast. I use <laughs> Oh, right. smart. Okay. I will be very honest. If I don't brush my teeth as soon as I Same. wake up, there's a big chance I'm going to forget. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know what? That is also what I have to do. Right? <laughs> so it's just like, it happens. I Otherwise, can't. I have to. Good. I can't drink my coffee With until my fresh mouth. Like no. I, I need. But like, but it's so strong. The breath. I don't even think that the our producer like goes through it. It's it's like, you guys are crazy. I also wear a bike plane, so as soon as I take that out, I'm like, I need to brush my teeth. Right. I I yeah, intermittent fast, so I don't eat until like 11 a.m. Oh, but right. I don't. I need coffee. Definitely mm -hmm. drink lots of coffee. And okay. yeah, no. But I but then drinking coffee after you brush your teeth tastes like. Terrible. So anyway, but see, with you. but let me just you know add to this. Um, okay, get, <laughs> build on this. I brush my teeth, and then I get the girls ready in the morning before we go downstairs. Because once you go downstairs, it's hard to come back upstairs do anything. Yeah. So then by that time, my teeth are brushing my teeth. Right? Yeah. Right. You're right though. No, yeah. that that's what I'm saying. Like you just amount of time dissipate, passed. dissipates. Yeah. Yeah. We're with you. Listen, okay. this is we learned so much. Priya, would you like to pick a number? One uh, to 99. Of course I do. Um, let's do 74. Ooh, 74. Let's see what we got. For no reason. What's a typical Saturday night look like? Okay. Yeah, what'd you do last night? That, like this year or five years ago? <laughs> very different. Answer. Right now, yeah. right yeah. now. Um, so it's one of two things. It's either we have a babysitter and my husband and I go for dinner with friends or we go for dinner, just the two of us to have a date night. And that's about once a month. Mm -hmm. um, so we go to like have a really good meal with tons of wine and then best ever. Or we're, you know, the kid, my daughter's asleep by 7.30 and we're eating nachos in front of the TV <laughs> and we're watching, binge watching the show like, in our pajamas. So it's, it's one or the other. I love that's that. Nice. How about you, Todd? Well, um, last night, I <laughs> consumed... How much what? alcohol did you drink last night? I don't want to talk about it on um, here. <laughs> there was a lot of wine. Touching. Um, and, but it's kind of like for you, like Saturday nights is usually, I'm not cooking. Like usually Friday, Saturday. Yeah. It's like takeout time or going out to eat. Like it's just a nice break from that cooking routine. So we are either ordering in as a family and watching like a movie night when the kids go to bed early and then Yon and I would watch another movie, like an adult movie, not, well, okay, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about this, John. Like okay, some, some like, above like, a P, like a PG-13 movie. <laughs> <laughs> I would have <laughs> I love it. No, it goes on. I mean, movie. we're not judging. If like that's what gets you guys kids, excited. You know? It's like it goes from watching like Moana to, to like Avengers. Watching, yeah, yeah. Like, non-kid friendly movie. Yeah. Like, I swear. <laughs> Something above PG. Something that's not rated G. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're with you. We're with you. We love that. That's oh, so I am. That's good. I like I love this. You know, we're all humans. Adult movies. Ash, pick a number night. for me. Uh, 63. 63. If you could sing a song perfectly in front of a massive crowd what would it be um I think it would be Adele right now I'm really fine I mean she's got pipes so if I could sing literally pipes. any Adele song um yes. maybe like uh, someone like you I like that one. Ooh, I love that nice. I want to hear everyone's answer imagine? to this one. Oh yeah. yeah let that pop that's like epic you go first hold on let me think the only song that I can sing actually there's two songs but I can sing two things full tilt Let's hear twinkle, it. twinkle, and push it. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a kid I sing that every night. To Master. It's yeah. like a, it's like a performance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you need that, anybody out there that needs 
a hush little baby and a twinkle twinkle I do. scene. That's mm-hmm. me. All right, we got you. So, Hurry okay, about. so this is uh, you inspired my answer. Mine's gonna be Hey Jude, because that's my mm-hmm. daughter's favorite song. Love that. And she, I don't know any of the words. I know one, I know one like verse, and right. then I just re- sing it over and over <laughs> terribly. Like the poor child has never heard a good singer. Like I'm, I, both my husband and I are terrible singers. <laughs> so I'm always like, oh, she thinks this is what singing sounds like. <laughs> like her mind will be blown. I know. Yeah. And that, I'm like, I want like my friends who can sing to come over and sing to her. She'd be like, oh, okay, way better. <laughs> like, yeah. why don't you sing? Yeah. Like <laughs> I have no talent. So that's why. <laughs> I love that. If I had to sing a song, I'm going to go with, because we're, I mean, we're not, it's October, but Mariah Carey just came to me. Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. And Christmas. All I want for Christmas is you. That just came to me. Yeah. That's what I, I'd like to start preparing now for you my Christmas day rendition. Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Well, this we good. Yeah. Don, you and I are yeah, soul sisters. Yeah. Around, I'm like, Hallmark. <laughs> like, no. Oh yeah. We're Maybe that could be us. everyone's Christmas gift uh, or holiday gift from Sarah. Yeah, is Sarah singing does. this on like a live yeah. Rival and Queen all that, for Christmas is you. Okay. But before we You've do got that, time to we need to get someone to coach me. So if anyone listening, <laughs> as a voice coach please we contact us up. yeah we could use that anyways for probably what i'm talking all right i'm gonna go here with number 64 which is beach or pool i'm going hands down 100 percent all the time beach never don't want a pool don't care I beach love always i love water which one do you want beach or pool you um right now i'm saying pool in my mind i knew you were gonna say yeah that. just because it's beach? easy access I'm to pool. like in out back to work or like pool? i'm pool i i love the beach but i'm like i yeah. All day, every Does day. Does anyone have a pool? Do neither of you? No. Oh, darn. Tom, what about you? Beach or pool? If I'm away, like on vacation, mm-hmm. I'm all about the beach. Mm. At home here, I find I would gravitate to the pool. And I think it's because I'm taking the sand home with me. Yeah. Oh, I love kids. taking the sand home but, with me. Oh, uh, not with like not children. With children, right? Oh, oh, man, like there's sand no. everywhere. Oh, Fair. I'll find sand for weeks. Yeah. I mean, I find sand for weeks. Right. So imagine <laughs> with with less. like with like three people. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I love that. That's so. Funny. I feel like the pool is just accessible because if I had a pool, I could like take my laptop outside and yeah. work under an umbrella and yes. just dip in and out. I'm kind of with you. Like I feel like that's the pool for me is like an everyday thing. Yeah. Like, the beach is. Yeah. Not in my life. I, I don't know whose life I'm thinking of, but it, the beach is like an excursion. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, I like the everyday, you know, but luxuries. The amount, the amount of stuff you have to bring to the beach as a kid. That's what I mean, it's, it's, it's not you know. doing a wagon. <laughs> No, oh yeah, no. you need a wagon. It's oh, not, we have it's lost. Like, oh, yeah. it's just I, I can't. someday, Sarah. It's a whole day. I can't we'll wait. Cursing it. Yeah, I won't. I'll be there. Yeah, this can't wait. Good. You so, should do it. <laughs> this has been so awesome, ladies, and we love learning about Blush Co. and Blush Co. branding. Or do you guys just call it Blush Co. Just as like one? We have like two handles on Instagram: Blush Co. Okay. Blush Co. Branding. But the okay. company is called. Blush Tell Co. us what those are, so people can check that out as well. At BlushCo.ca and at BlushCo.branding. Perfect. And where can people find you online as well? Uh, Blushco.ca. Perfect. Easy peasy. Yep. Blushco all day. Yeah. We're so excited. It was so nice to chat with you guys. And yeah, like we said, we're so, so excited for your launch and just can't wait to watch it all unfold. What a great way to spend a Sunday. I know. I love this. I should have brought wine. (laughs) I know. Next time. Next time. I yes. mean, we usually are drinking, but sometimes we don't. It's weird. Next we're, time. we're trying we to learn. improve. Yeah. Learn. This learn. was a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over. We did this all right. <laughs> Burgers Thank and wine. You. Thank you guys for having us also. We do Thank you so it. much. This yeah. has been awesome.